Hello and welcome to Some Grab with Mark Russell. Today we're going to do something on the braai again. We're going to be grilling the snook. What is a snook? Well, it is a fish that you get around here in Cape Town on the coastline and around South Africa. It's a carnivorous fish, um, so it only eats fish, doesn't eat any vegetation in the ocean. Because of this, it gives off a pretty unique flavor. It's a very well-known fish in South Africa. Um, everyone brags that they know the best way how to do it. I'm, this is the way I'm going to do it. And the big difference in what I do with, when I grill grow a snook is I add in some coriander. I love the, the flavor of it. It doesn't have to have it in it. It does give it a bit of a green tinge, but like the, as long as you've got your, your apricot jam, um, your garlics, your lemon juice, all that, um, and basting, that is pretty much how you grill the snook. We're going to be doing it on a very low temperature. Um, so you start, start it off very high and it doesn't cook very quickly. It's almost the opposite to how you would cook a steak. You would have it very high and you turn it consistently so it doesn't dry out the fish. Also, with the, with the skin, you cook it on the skin side more than you cook it on the flesh side. I'd like to give a special thanks to this video sponsors, Michelle and Ian. Thank you. Your, your sponsorship has gone a long way. This is a grill you need to fry a snook. It doesn't really do well on an open grid. So just turning it is tricky. It can fall apart, even though it's quite a sturdy fish, quite a robust fish. This is what you need. Um, so you lay the, so it goes in and you give it the flip. So this video is dedicated to you guys. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy. Let's rust up some grab. So this snook comes straight from a fishmonger. It's 1.2 kilograms. And that's how it looks. So the, the new thing about a snook is it's quite bony. And it's got a very unique flavor in the fish. And it's quite a robust. Um, it's, quite, quite, it's quite robust. So you can grill this fish, which is what we're going to be doing today. Your your hake and your other sort of edible fish, generally it's quite very soft texture, so you can't put it on any grill, or, um, and so you can't cook it on the fire that easily. So let's give you a show around. That's the back of it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a apricot-based marinade. It's a very Malay thing. It's a a lot of South Africans will claim it as, as a South African dish. It's, yes, it is. Um, a bride of snook is South African. But more, more importantly, it's Malay. So I'm going to put some paper towels on this fish to dry it up. And then I'm going to get started with the marinade. I'm going to try to get rid of this moisture. Um, there's quite a bit of moisture on this snook. Um, I'm just going to put it like that. So to make our marinade or glaze, we're going to need the following. Half a cup of apricot jam, smooth apricot jam. This is the hero of it. A couple of tablespoons of peach chutney. About 20 grams of coriander, fresh. Five cloves of garlic. Two jalapeno chilies. You can use bird's, bird's eye chilies as well. They should probably preferred. Salt and pepper. A lemon, I'm going to get some lemon rind in and the juice. And then four tablespoons of vegetable stock. And let's put it in.
that's pretty good. All right, now we put this to the side. Let's bring our stook back in. Take off the roller towel carefully. Before I go and marinate this and baste it, you just try and get a something to put it in. Yeah, I've got this baking tin, it's an oversized baking tin. So I'm going to be putting it in. If you don't have something like this, I suggest wrapping it, wrapping it in tin foil or even the package that it came in. Mine is just manky. It doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to put it in here and then I will be have my basting from here. So as you can see, it's not going to all fit. So I'm going to cut off the end here. You can see there's a big bone. It's quite a bone there. Okay, and this will go in as well. See, there's still a little bit of moisture here. I'm going to pat it again. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the basting over, fold it, and put it in the, the best vessel. And this is going to sit for one to two hours until the fire is ready and we can get to grilling. It wouldn't be proper snook without vegetables. Gonna do a butternut on the fire as well. I'm gonna wrap it in tin foil. Everything's gonna be cooked on the fire. What we're gonna put in here, I'm gonna put in more jalapeno chilies and feta. Okay, so this didn't quite work out to plan. As you can see, I didn't cut very straight. So, but you know, I'm not one to waste, so this is going to actually work out in our favor because I only use half anyway. And I'm going to hollow out this, and then we're going to put the innards in with feta and jalapeno. Let's get cracking. <laughs> That's how, that's how she looks. Now, this, normally it's for, normally, it's in, normally it, this is in half, and I put it on like this. You press down, you pretty much make a secret butternut. So, this is going to go directly onto the coals. So you need protection from the coals and also this protects the inside because we rather have the skin burn which you're not going to eat than the inside. Also the cut also the cut has there's going to be a bit of steam, the cut allows a bit to escape and it stays within the tinfoil. I'm just going to put it this way. You get it pretty much wrapped like a present. So I want to get a bit over right now, like this. A little nice and compact. Pack it in. Now we're going to roll. Pack it in. And you're going to roll.
like that. I've got a grid here so I can or the grid so I can flip it over easily. And I'm going to put the snook on it, flatten it out, skin side down, and then the tail in the same way. I've now got the rest of this basting to keep it moist. Okay, so fire is ready. And I'll put on the snook, just like that. Skin side down first, and then I'll give it regular turns. Now, here's the button it. You need to find that smaller side, which is here. You know, put it in the coals. So as you can see, there's a wonderful glaze on the on the snook, and it's not the best looking fish once it's cut up because it kind of just falls apart a little bit. And as you can see, if you look closely, there are bones. Let me take one out here. I think oh, okay. Well, there's a bone right there. Um, as you can see there. You know, normally in restaurants you'd sort of take out this kind of thing, but with a snook, it's kind of impossible. So it's kind of, you know, taken as part of the meal. You just got to be very careful of bones. The good thing is they are quite big, so they're quite easy to get out. Um, as far as the, f the fish is, it's a very much a different texture of meat. It's not, it's not like hake or your, yeah, your like sort of soft fish. It's quite, it's quite a meaty texture. Now, normally you like you can smoke um, smoke snook, so you can't smoke snook. This is down open fire. In a wee bay, you'd have it on a lo like a more consistent low heat. You'd be putting like smoky things, and then yeah, uh, but you uh, you always want to cook the snook at a very slow rate. You don't want to get it done in a hurry. It just allows the the glazing and the marinade to get into the fish. So like the whole way through that bite, it is just that flavor. Like it's sort of that sort of sweet, um, with that, and that, that, aroma, ar that sweet and aromatic flavor that you get that punches through. Um, and then that's not feta jalapeno. That's just a favorite of mine. Uh, it doesn't have to go with every snook dish. So yeah, I've got to work around the, the bones here a bit. So it comes apart quite easily. The reason why you, the reason why you don't take it off the bone in the beginning, if you take all the bones out, it will the the fish actually just falls apart. The bones kind of hold it together while it's cooking. Um, yeah, but if you guys if you can get past the the bones, it is a delicious delicious fish to eat. So uh, yeah, please let me know in the comment section below whether you would have a dish like this, you know, with the the bones inside, or you would go for something else that you know you don't have to fish out bones. Please let me know what you think of the video down below in the comments. I, if you, if you liked it, please give it a like. If you want to see more of what I'm doing, please click click the subscribe button. And you'll be notified when I release more content. I do have a lot of exciting things coming down in the pipeline. You may not see as many videos from me in future. I plan to do now one video a week and focus on it a lot more and give you a much higher quality video. 
Um, and that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.